Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's Trey the DIY Ninja. If you're new to this channel, please feel free to hit the red subscribe button, ring the notification bell to be alerted of when I post next, and thumbs up this video and leave a comment down below. Alright, let's get started. Today we are going to be what is the word? Fixing basically <laughs> my original custom logo snap tab design. If you never if you didn't see my previous video, I'll put a link up here. But um yeah, this is the snap tab that I just really rushed designed and I noticed uh, many flaws while stitching it out, which you would see in my previous video, but I'm going to attempt to fix that now. So I opened my working file here in Stitch Artist, which is this is in Brilliance Stitch Artist level two. And what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like now, this original stitch out, because this was definitely a rush job. I used the magic wand on a graphic that I drew on Paint 3D on Windows 10 instead of Procreate on my iPad, which is what I normally use, but that's not the problem. The problem was um, when I got into the digitizing software, I rushed it instead of taking my time because, you know, I'm a mom first and a graphic artist and digitizer next, so yeah. Let's see, let me just play this out for you guys so you can see. Okay, it's way too slow, so I'm going to speed it up. There we go. So the eye stitch out first and then the body, which is also wrong right away because the tab is separate and that caused um, double stitching here, which made my machine struggle when it stitched out. What else? Also this eye hole for the mask, um, just outlining it was way too thin. Uh, let's see, on the results, it didn't look right. I think I'll change this to a satin stitch. I'm going to re-outline this entire thing. And I need to fix the start and stop points because there was like a line straight across the eye here that I just could not cut. <laughs> Jump stitch, I just could not cut. So I mean, I'm sure you, you probably could do it, but like I say in every video, my vision, not the best, and I just couldn't, could not do it. So just to make my life and everyone else's life easier, if I do decide to um, give this file away or sell this file in the future, I wanna make it as perfect as possible. So I'm gonna come over here. Um, when I'm doing when I'm doing a screen recording, for some reason I'm kind of like new to Windows 10 because I've been, you know, a Mac user for so long now. I haven't used a PC in forever, and then I bought one just to digitize. So I'm not sure if this side panel here shows, but I think it does. So I'm going to just open this up here. Where, there we go. And so right now everything is selected, but I think I need to just select, okay, so here we go. Here's the eye mask area. So on the side here, it will show an image which is really small. I can't see what it is, but it says the type of stitch. So this is the run. I'm going to click up here to Stitch Artist. You're gonna, you're going to need Stitch Artist in Embrilliance in order to digitize. So. If you have Embrilliance Essentials, you can work with previous files that are already digitized, but you can't actually edit them. Like, you can resize them, but that's about it. And maybe add font. But here, to actually digitize and like rework stitches and things like that, you're going to need Stitch Artist. And that's this button here. Um, so I have the section that I'm working with selected. Let me just zoom in. And there's a panel here on the side to move up just to get it to more of my eye level. I'm going to change it to satin stitch. Right now it's on a run stitch and it's on a double run stitch. But even in on the screen here, I can see it just doesn't look right. But like I said, I, I rushed it and I just was really excited to make a snap tab and I just wanted to stitch anything out and see if I could turn it into a snap tab. Which, um, yeah, if you're waiting for part two, uh, that didn't work out so well. So yeah. <laughs> 
I'm gonna have to re-digitize. I'm gonna re-digitize this, and then I will re-stitch it out and see what that looks like in my next video. If this video takes too long, because digitizing does take a while. If you want it to look right. Okay, so here we go. So I changed it to a satin stitch in red. So the reason why I made it red was just so the machine would stop since all my thread is black it will just continue going and going and going and I wanted it to stop after it stitched out this red so that I can put a, um, the backing fabric on before I did the outline for the rest so it looks funny on the screen here right like it looks like it's way too thick but when it stitches out it's actually a lot thinner over here on the side, I'm not sure if you can see, but you can adjust the width, the density, the style. Why does it say pattern? Okay, we'll just leave it there. Uh, I have it at 3.5. I think I'll leave it at 3.5. And the eyes came out fine. So next I'm going to move here to the outline of the body. And I have to redo this whole thing. So I'm going to delete it. And I'm also going to click on this and delete that. So right now this is all we have. And I'm going to click on my image so I have something to trace. And here is where the work begins. Some more. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to select my points tool. And I'm just going to start tracing. Let's start in this upper corner here. Wherever your point lies is where you're going to trace. Um, this is a straight line, but I'm going to see like here where there, there's like kind of like a cusp. You're going to want to press the shift key to just make that sharp. You can adjust your points at a later date. And here is a cusp. Because right now they're all going to be round. And here is a cusp. So anytime there's kind of like a corner looking place, you're going to want to make it into a cusp. I think I need to make it bigger now. Just so I can see. Okay, I have a point there. I'm going to just continue along. tedious part of digitizing so how this is round I'm not going to make that into a cusp and this is also round so I'm just going to let the lines curve down but yeah so in my previous digitized file of this one. I just used the magic wand tool and it's not as precise and it actually can cause a lot of problems if you rush things. Whereas this method of the old school way of drawing your points and just being precise, taking a little more time and concentration, you'll get a lot cleaner, more professional looking work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so here at the thumb, I'm gonna get into this little curve here. And go into the hand. I'm trying 
trying to use um oops let me guess if you mess up you can press delete to delete your last point here we go cusp and here you can make a straight line if you press like um, control but I don't think it really matters here so I'm just gonna bring it up okay and then I started here so I'm gonna press this little red circle button to close off my design and then uh, what is it right click Oops. close off my design and then I'm going to do an applique this is the applique, no, this one's the applique button, that was the satin stitch. This is the applique button next to the satin stitch. And there we go. I'm going to turn off my image by clicking this button over here to the left. And what happened? Mm. Okay, okay, so it turned it into a blanket stitch. So you have the option to change your stitches. I do notice that my tracing of the image is a little off. Like it's not completely round. Let's see, let me just go here. It's a little warped. Let's see what we can do about that. Mm. I don't know if I care enough, but let's 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 just see. Let's just see. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna change this to a satin stitch. Right now it's on E stitch. Oops, wrong button. Second stitch, there we go, and let's adjust the density is at 5 right now, and my stitch width is at 3. I'm going to change my stitch width to 3.5, and you just kind of hold on and toggle up to 3.5. Now it's going to look funky again on here. <coughs> to be warping. Select and delete. And you can also move. You can click on the dot. If I can. There we go. And then just move it out. Let's see that rounds things out a little. See, like it looks like I lost definition on all my appendages here and the tie, but you'll see when we stitch it out that it actually is okay. Okay, so this is an applique design for a key fob because when you're using marine leather, like the less stitches you can get on there, the better. Because if you like, let's say I feel, if I did this as a fill it would pull and um, 
stretch the leather out it might come out warped so I'm not confident in that yet though I will test that out eventually but right now I think I'm okay with this let's take a look at this stitch out and see what that looks like okay so the eyes come out then the mask eye mask part and then the whole outside stitches out together yeah, super simple design um, 3,186 stitches, and, oops, okay, let me go back, I forgot to do one thing, which is to go to your create on the top, and do auto entry exit, and, yeah, we're gonna leave it like that. I usually don't like to auto sequence because when you digitize, you digitize in the order you want it to stitch out. Right, so the first thing first, second thing next, so on and so on. So let's just take a look and see if that affected anything in the final stitch out. One more time. Eyes, mask. Looks good. So I'm going to save it. Save it as. You probably can't see this pop up screen, but I'm currently saving it. Um, I'm going to save this as. My DIY Ninja Applique Snap Tab Final. Let's stitch this bad boy out. And we'll see what it looks like in person.